today on Judge Faith. Was he fired unfairly? Did he have a lot of satisfied he, customers? He had, he had a, quite a few satisfied More customers. More than other plumbers? Very possibly, yeah. Yes. Okay. So I couldn't was have he, been that bad after all, right? Was he one of your top performers? He was one of our top salesmen. The top salesman. <laughs> but was he not a team player? He caused strife with my other employees. He refused to do things my way. In fact, he blatantly said, I'm not going to do it like that. Like well, not. What did I do that you Sir, didn't Sir, you're, you're kind sorry, of demonstrating man. what he's saying right now. You do know that, right? <laughs> Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Stephen Douglas says his former boss deducted wages from his paycheck without cause and then fired him for no reason. He is suing for loss of wages. Defendant Michael Jordan claims the plaintiff was extremely hard to work with and wanted to run the show. He's countersuing for the value of stolen parts. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Yeah, in this case, we have Douglas versus Jordan. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Stephen Douglas. Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Michael Jordan, for... <laughs> <laughs> $150 for unpaid wages you say the defendant owes you? That's right. You are countersuing, sir, for $600 for theft of services. Yes, Your Honor. I understand, Mr. Douglas, that you used to work for Mr. Jordan and were terminated from your job with him. That's and correct. And that's how this entire situation yes, started. So why don't you take me back to the very beginning and tell me how all of this started. Okay. Um, back in June 2014 of this year, um, I had been looking for a job. I came across his ad on Craigslist. Said he was looking for a good plumber. I couldn't think of anybody better than myself, so I applied. <laughs> and um, I was his best plumber for quite some time. So that was in June of 2014. What yes, was the hiring process, sir? Uh, we came in, he interviewed. Um, we liked him. We knew that we might have a little firestorm on our hands, but uh, we brought him on anyway. What do you mean by you, you thought you might have a firestorm on your hands? Well, Mr. Douglas has quite the personality. Um, he's pretty full of himself. Uh, I like the confidence of, of him, but as long as it doesn't deter what he does, you know, in the company, um, he, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty confident. Tell me about your business. Do you have your own plumbing company, and how long have you had that business? Yes, ma'am. I started in 1999. It's something that I've given my blood, sweat, and tears for. And, um, you know, my biggest issue with Steven is, you know, him uh, wanting to come in and make big changes and tell me basically how I'm going to run my business. It's just not, not going to happen. Okay. How long have you been a plumber, sir? Uh, about 15 years. And did you have any special training and education to become um, a plumber? What I specialize in majority is, is sales. I go into a person's house, they got a bad toilet. When I walk out, they've got a new water heater, new sinks, new tubs, new everything. <laughs> that's my job. By me doing that, that's how he gets paid. Was he good at his job? He's very good at sales. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of confidence to be good at sales, which he's very good at. And ask him how many satisfied customers called in and gave thumbs up. Did he have a lot of satisfied he, customers? He had, he had a, quite a few satisfied More customers. More than other plumbers? Very possibly, yeah. Yes. Okay. So I couldn't was have been he... that bad after all, right? Well, was he one of your top performers? He was one of our top salesmen. The top salesman. <laughs> but it takes, it takes more than, it takes a lot more than just being able to sell. And right. to, I've that, also that got the paychecks to back it up, too. That doesn't mean that you're a good employee because so you can happened? sell something. So what happened? You say he wasn't a great employee in the end, and you had to fire him. Prior to this date where I know you went and you picked up your truck and you terminated him, what were some of the issues you say you had? Every company meeting we had, it was constant back and forth, um, yelling, arguing, the guy refusing to do anything, follow policy. He refused to do things my way. In fact, he blatantly said, I'm not going to do it 
like that. Like what? Not. What did I do that you Sir, didn't Sir, you're, you're kind sorry, of demonstrating man. what he's saying right now. You do know I, that, right? I, I'm not going to I'm not going to debate that I am argumentative. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But when I have a point that needs to be brought to the table and all the other employees want to shut their mouth because they don't want to say anything to the boss man, I'm going to say it. Okay, I understand and that. And I think I think by me making him as much but, money but as let I me, did, let me I have let me explain right. something to you yes, that may work in well, apparently didn't work so well in, no, in his company. Right. But it's certainly not going to work here, here. Okay. in my courtroom. I understand. All right, I so you that. speak when it's your opportunity yes, to. All right. So what were some of the other issues? I got word that he had received a referral from a vendor. I believe they paid him 800, approximately $800. Mm -hmm. um, that money is supposed to come through the company. Um, I take 25% of it, um, and then I give the plumber the rest of it. So he would have gotten 600 but. Uh, he wasn't going to say anything about it. He denied it, and then eventually came clean on it and admitted that he had lied and taken the money. So let me ask you something. Did you understand that when you made a sale, the company would keep a percentage of that? Isn't that how they make That's their not money a sale, from though. sales? That's a referral. That's a little bit different. Now, what I didn't know is that he took a percentage of that referral. Now, and, and when he came to me about it, yes, I told him no. However, I did pay him the money. Okay, well, stop. Yes. Why did you lie then? If you thought that you were doing the right thing and you say you didn't know the rules, when he came to you and asked you about the money, why did you lie and say you didn't receive it? Because I had my guard up, in all honesty. Not every company requires you to give that money. Coming up on Judge Faith, things get heated. If he would come and do his job and do it the best of his ability and, and not complain about every little policy, then he would, I mean... But complaining about a really policy doesn't mean I'm not doing my job. And only Judge Faith can solve this plumbing predicament. As far as doing my job what is What he's saying, sir, is people want to like the people they work around. Understand. You understand what I'm yes, saying? You need to be a team player. I understand. And from everything I'm hearing from him, he's saying that you were not a team player. Plaintiff Stephen Douglas is suing his former boss for wages that were deducted from his check. He says the defendant fired him for no reason. Defendant Michael Jordan is countersuing, claiming that the plaintiff stole parts from the workplace. What happens next? Well, I had alerted Mr. Douglas that that was his last chance, that basically everyone else wanted Mr. Douglas to go in the company, but I was going out on a limb for him because I like, I like him and he can, uh, you know, do good sales. It's kind of a shame that because he's able to sell well, he can make a lot of money for himself as well as his employer. He just can't keep his mouth shut long enough to do it well, mm -hmm. long enough. If he would come and do his job and do it the best of his ability and, and not complain about every little policy, then he would, I mean, but complaining about a really policy well. doesn't mean I'm not doing my job. As far as doing my job what is concerned... What he's saying, sir, is people want to like the people they work around. I understand. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, You need to be a team player. I understand. And from everything I'm hearing from him, he's saying that you were not a team player. Well, it's and not so a team And so he was willing job. to let you go, although he thought you were a great salesperson. Right. And listen, I can tell you're probably a great salesperson. Yes, ma'am. And, but he was willing to let you go because that wasn't worth keeping you around because of the other issues he had with, with your attitude. I understand. So you end up terminating him three months after you fire him. You're suing because you say that you did not get your last paycheck. That's correct. Okay, so why don't you tell me what happened? Okay, uh, I look out my window to see my truck drive off. Just drive off. Is that the company truck? Yes, ma'am. So every plumber has a company truck? Yes, ma'am. They okay. go home, they take their plumbing trucks home. I see my truck drive off, my tools, uh, mind you, I have thousands of tools in this truck. Um, he drives around the street, parks in the middle of the street, and I asked him what's going on. He told me I was fired. I said, fine. I asked him if he could... Really? That was your reaction? Fine? Yeah, I, well, I knew it was coming anyways, because his under-supervisor didn't like me. Uh, just didn't like me. And, and he can't run the business because he's busy being drunk all the time. So, Ooh, wow. uh, you know, there's that, there, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, it is what it is. But uh, as I say, can I get my tools off the truck? He leaves it parked in the middle of the street. Now, my house is down a hill in Georgia. And to walk up the hill to bring tools down, I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of tools. Carried them all down, took me about an hour and a half, and then he drove off. And then, um, I get a note with a paycheck 
with zero dollars, saying that um, your pay for your commission after taxes is $564.21. Um, by the way, we're taking $564.21. And what was so, the reason they gave you? Well, the reason that he gave me was simply because this inventory sheet that he gave me, that I signed the day I got hired, um, He's saying that there are things missing. From the truck. Correct. Because that's the inventory, inventory sheet from the truck. Correct. Okay. Tell me what happened, sir. So our uh, manager goes and picks up the truck the day that we knew that we were letting him go. We take was it there out. a final straw? Something happened that day? Absolutely. Okay. No, the, it was the Friday before. This was on a Monday. The Friday before, he was scheduled to work on Saturday morning. We have one technician working on Saturday. I get a text message in the middle of the night at 4.30 in the morning. I don't know what he was doing at 4.30 in the morning. Sounded to me like he was drunk himself Maybe. and didn't want to come into work the next day. Possibly. He tells, his text message says, I'm not feeling well, not gonna be into work. My phone is off. Basically, do not call me. I'm not doing anything for you tomorrow. Did you send that message? Uh, and, indeed, I did. However, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. 4.30 in the morning? Right. What, time, and, and what, time was, you, what time was he scheduled to be at work, sir? At 7 a.m. in the Hold morning. Hold on, but what he's not telling you is two weeks prior to that, I had worked a shift for a guy so he could take off. Now, I had texted that guy and said, hey, dude, you, you owe me one. I'm not coming in tomorrow. Make it happen. And then I sent one to him. <laughs> So That's they, not true. Did that guy end up covering for him? That guy ended up covering for him, but he was not alerted. We had to personally ask him, and he did us a favor by came, coming in and covering for Stephen. But so it is you not our responsibility to, to find his replacement. Right. It's his. Next on Judge Faith, let go with no pay. That was the last straw. We fired him the next following Monday. But was he pirating parts? He took several <laughs> bins of parts. He's taking them out of the truck, our service manager says, you know that if, that if any of those parts are missing off of the truck, you know that you're gonna end up paying for them. Plaintiff Stephen Douglas is suing his former boss for wages that were deducted from his check. He says the defendant fired him for no reason. Defendant Michael Jordan is countersuing, claiming that the plaintiff stole parts from the workplace. When you called that person, had he received a message from Mr. Not Douglas? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. No, not that I'm aware of. I sent it to him. Go our, ahead, sir. Our manager took the truck, parked it in the street so that he couldn't call the police. I mean, you do realize you work for him, he doesn't work for you. You do realize that, right? <laughs> well, here's the thing. If I don't get an hourly pay, I don't get an hourly pay. Just stop. So Just if stop. I don't go out and sell, he don't make no money either. He makes nothing. He, he actually spends money on gas and insurance and so forth. He needs me to go out and sell. Okay, just stop. Go ahead, sir. So that was the last straw for you? That was the last straw. We fired him the next following Monday. <laughs> okay, so what happened? How did you fire him? Well, our, our manager took the truck without him knowing out of the driveway, parked it in the middle of the street so he couldn't call the police claiming property, you know, that we were on his property. We didn't want to ask him to remove our, his tools from our truck on his property okay. so that he could say, get off of my property. He took his tools and he took bins, which the bins were mine, by the way, he took several bins of parts, the same parts that we deducted from his last check. He's taking them out of the truck. Our service manager says, you know that if any of those parts are missing off of the truck, you know that you're gonna end up paying for them. So the service manager is there with the truck, right? Correct. So when he tells him to take his tools, isn't the service manager watching everything he's removing watching from the truck? Watching everything he's removing, including the parts that we deducted from his truck. So you say from that his, his deductions are for parts that he removed from the truck? Yes. So how do you prove to me, because I see there are some issues here, mm -hmm. but how do you prove to me, <laughs> how do you prove to me what parts were on the truck? He don't even know, that, Judge. Stop. I'll tell you how you don't know. Mr. Douglas, I'm sorry, I need you to stop. How are you going to prove to me a complete inventory of parts that were on the truck and that are now missing because you say he took them? Well, I don't have... That's almost impossible to prove. It is, it is almost impossible to prove. How are you going to prove that he didn't use those parts in jobs that he did the previous few days that he worked? What he's supposed to do is when he does a job and he removes parts from the truck, he lists them on the back of the invoice and they get replenished on a weekly basis. 
But it had, he'd already had, this was like in the middle of a certain time period, right? Like this is on a Monday. Correct. So he's been working Friday, Thursday, all these other days. How do you know at this point that these parts that are missing were not used in a job? Because they were never written on the back of any invoice. When was that invoice it, supposed to be written? They do them, you know, on a weekly basis. Right. What day that week was that invoice written? Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, we do our turn-ins on Wednesdays. From Wednesday to Monday when you fired him, there was no additional inventory check for that five-day time period, right? No, ma'am. We, we did not do an inventory check on his truck the entire three months while he was employed. We do them, we do them randomly. Yeah, but see, that's a problem when you're keeping money for parts and you say that these parts were missing from the truck because he took them. And now, Judge Faith rules. Your counterclaim is $600 for theft of services. Correct. The very last job that Mr. Douglas did for us, um, the day that he was fired, as though as he knew that it was his last day, he did uh, three items for a customer and did not charge her. Wrote on there, complimentary, did a job for a customer and did not charge. No, ma'am. It's the, like did this. Not charge she the had customer. a stopped up drain. Well, did he tell? But did he tell you that he was? So he wrote that it was complimentary. So yes. he didn't hide it from you. He did not hide it from me. But okay. we don't do we don't do free work for anyone. Why did you do the work for free? There was no material used. None. It was a strictly labor job. When I knocked on this lady's door, and I saw her sitting, and she told me come in because she can't walk and she's 80 years old, and all she has is a stopped up sink that I took a plunger to like this twice and cleared it, I didn't feel the need to charge this woman $600 for service because I didn't feel that it was necessary. I felt that this woman could use a free handout. I mean, I don't do it all the time, obviously. I mean, I, I make $15,000 a week for this guy. Okay, I've heard enough. On your claim for $550, you say the defendant wrongfully withheld that money from your check. I don't find you've met your burden of proof in proving to me in court that he kept $550 worth of inventory, that he wrongfully withheld that inventory. I don't know if it was used on a job. I don't know who else had access to that truck during that time period, so I don't find that you've met your burden. On your counterclaim for theft of services, I do find that you acted outside of the scope of your employment when you decided on your own that you would not charge a customer and call it customer appreciation. That's not your call when you work for someone else. You are an employee. His, he has a business that he is trying to run. You don't get to make those kinds of decisions. So here's how we're going to do this. You owe him $550 for his last check, but you owe him for that last job because I find that you acted outside of the scope of your employment. I'm going to order him to give you 30% of that job, which is $180. So that's $730 to you. I'm ordering him to pay you $420, which is the remainder of that job, had he actually charged the $600. I checked the rates, the plumbing rates in your area. Standard fare for those jobs that you did. It's expensive, but standard fare. So my judgment in this case is $730 in favor of the plaintiff, $420 in favor of the defendant. That's going to offset and leave you with a $310 judgment. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.